Okay, this is math two, I'm sorry, math eight, unit two, lesson seven, looking at some similar polygons today in class. And so we were talking about different sides and angles of similar polygons. And you had a quick conversation about uh, some congruency statements, whether it be true in all, some, or in no cases. And see so a little conversation about if triangles are congruent, uh, figures are congruent, are they similar? And we would say if they're congruent, they are definitely all gonna be similar. And that's how that works there. But if they're similar, are they all are they congruent to one another? This is going to be a sometimes, okay? See, congruence is going to mean like they're equal in like every single way possible. Similar might mean that you have a big one and a little one, so those wouldn't be congruent. They're similar, but sometimes you can have if you have the same size shape, we would say that they are similar and they're congruent. So that's why it's a sometimes there. But when you start playing with angle measurements, angle measurements there. If you're saying angle measurements may change, nope, they're never gonna change. We're not gonna change things around. If an angle measurement changes, then it's a totally different shape, and it's not what we're gonna be talking about, okay? So here we go. Are they similar? Let's look at a square and a rhombus. We have, first of all, we have side lengths that are the same, but we notice that our angle measurements are all different right there. So it says, Pryor says these polygons are similar because their side lengths are all the same. Claire says they're not similar because the angles are different. Who do you agree with there? And we would say, hopefully we talked about it, let's go with probably with Claire with the not similar. Even just looking at this visually, we can tell that there's something different about those two shapes. While the lengths might be the same, the angle measurements show that we have a totally different shape from one to the other. When we take a look at the rectangle here, we have people having a conversation that uh, they're similar. We have Jada who says they're similar because all the side lengths differ by two. Okay, so what's Jada doing? Jada is saying you have four plus two is six, and two plus two is four. Well, we know that when we're talking about similarity with, with shapes, there should be something the scale factor we multiply by. We don't add, we multiply. And in this case here, because we are multiplying, we're not multiplying at all, we're adding, Jada's gonna be incorrect there. Now for Lynn, she says they're similar, she can dilate AD, and BC using a scale factor of two. So going to there to there, scale factor times two. And then going from AB to EF. Okay, so to go from AB to EF then, what uh, Lynn is saying is that we're going by a scale factor times 1.5. The problem with that is that your scale factors, in order for that to work, need to be equal and those are not. So it actually would probably say, I don't agree with either one of them. They are both mistaken in how they do things there. Okay, taking a look at then the next one, 7.3. It says to find someone similar. And so as you looked at the find someone similar idea, you had a card and you're supposed to find someone else from as a card with a polygon that's similar but not congruent to yours. And you find your partner and talk about how you know that they are similar there. So take some time doing that and see what you get when you work with your partner. Good luck finding someone who looks like you in terms of your polygon. From there, you moved on to a little, are you ready for more perhaps? You did this one here. And it's kind of a fun way to say, how can I make these shapes the same way? Um, you have an equal out triangle, which is divided up there. And can we do that with a position one on the right to make a similar figure or to the original? Yep, you can. This is a currently a four, 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 and then we have eight there. So I thought about a two, a two, and a one, two, three, four, and a four, and a two. I could chop that guy right there, and I could chop it here, and chop it here, and I could end up with one, two, three, four, these similar shapes. I could do that again and again to get smaller and smaller shapes as I go along. So the fewest number of pieces I could use to do it would be four, but the most would be however far I want to chop this down. I mean, you can make it infinitely small, by making it smaller and smaller. Okay, so in summary for today's lesson, we would say that every angle and side in one polygon has a corresponding part in the other. So angle and side has a corresponding part, and you're keeping there. All pairs of corresponding angles have the same measurement, so angles are the same there. And the corresponding sides, corresponding sides are related by a single scale factor. You can't have multiple scale factors there. Okay, so when we look at a shape like this, for example, to go from a 4 to a 3, hmm, that's going to be a scale factor of 3 fourths, 
but to go from a three to a two, that's a scale factor of two thirds. Because those scale factors are different, then that means it's not gonna work according to that rule right there. It's just not gonna work out for us very well. Okay, it needs to have that there. The other thing that takes place is we wanna make sure that the angles are the same measurements here. So while those might match there, our angle measurements don't match. And because the angle measurements don't match, we're not gonna have a similar uh, shape there. So keep that in mind. All right, so looking at tonight's homework, take a moment to pause, do your work and then come back and check it. it says triangle DEF is a dilation of ABC with a scale factor of two. Okay, so you went from ABC and you went to then move to triangle DEF with a scale factor of two. In triangle ABC, the largest angle measures 82 degrees. What is the largest angle measure in DEF? Remember, angles stay the same. So if the largest one in the first one is 82, our other one is gonna be also 82. It's gonna stay the same. Number two, draw two polygons that are similar, but could be mistaken for not being similar. All right, so maybe I have a rectangle like this, and maybe I drop it down on its side like that. So again, it's just a sketch. Let's say they were the same length. Well, someone might look at it and say, huh, they're not similar because they're, shaped, they're facing the wrong direction. Because I did a rotation or a translation, maybe they might think it's different. But that's okay. We could be able, we might be able to prove it by showing that side lengths are equal to each other and things like that. If I had two polygons that are not similar but could be mistaken for being similar, explain why. Well, this might be going to have like a triangle, for example. Okay? If I had a triangle where it they are not similar, but they people might think they're similar because they are the same shape and maybe they look proportional to each other, that doesn't mean that they are gonna be similar because the side lengths might be different. And that means they are they are not necessarily similar. Could work there. For number four, these two triangles are similar. Find links A, B, and note the two figures are not drawn to scale. Okay, so they're not going to be perfect, but we get the idea. So looking at the long side, the long side is 21, and this long side is A. So the question is, how do I get from 21 to A? Not sure. Here's my long side, this side here. This side here is five, and five is gonna match up with this guy right here, B. So how do I get from five to B is my question there. And what I do know is I do happen to know how to get from nine to three. So to get from nine to three is times three, but to get from three to nine is gonna be times one third. So with that in mind, let's take a look at what we're going to be doing. Oops, I did times three. Sorry, this is times one third that way. Got ahead of myself. And this one is times three. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's take a look then at 21, moving this direction, times a third is going to equal seven. So A would be equal to seven. No problem there. And then to go from three to nine is times three. So five times three is gonna be 15. So we would say that B is equal to 15. <laughs> Sorry about my little sketch there. And let's take a look at number five. So the Jada claims that BCD prime is dilation of BCD using A center dilation. How can we convince her that she's just not quite right there? Okay, so a couple ways we can look at it. One, we could take our dilation points here and we can line them up and see if we can line them up and I'm already having trouble getting those just right right if I line those two up it, I can get close but it's hard to say if that's gonna be exactly right it's close All right let's pretend it works just for now if I get there to there I might say okay that kind of lines up there and then when I get here to here I get that to line up there so let's pretend that's working okay so it might be close. It looks like I'm a little bit off in one of them, but maybe it's just my drawing. The other thing you wanna look at to decide what's happening from one shape to the X is, is the scale factor the same? That's kind of a key thing here. So let's say for example, that if I'm going from, this is the dilation. If I started here, I'm growing. So that's my length from B to B, there to there. This should then do the same thing and I can get it to go there and there. So we're, instead of one, it's becoming three. So from here to here, we have a scale factor or dilation of being times three. 
But when I look at line D, for example, AD, here's my line and my line. If I just drop that in place, there's one, and there's my three, D prime should be out there. So my scale factor is a little bit off there, isn't it? This is like two and a bit, two and a little bit more, it's not three. So my scale factors are different, and because the scale factors are different, then this is not going to be an accurate statement there. This is not a real dilation. And just in the shape, you can tell it's different too. Look at this angle measurement. Does this angle measurement here match this one right there? And if we use the protractor, we could say, nope, it's not going to work. This one is actually almost 90 or a little less than 90, and that one is more. You took a piece of paper, for example, and you drop that in there to say, is it 90 degrees? Uh, it's not quite, right? Because it's kind of cutting over there. 90 degrees would be here, so it's not 90, it's a little less than 90. And this one, oh my goodness, it's very different. Just compare those two little corner pieces, right? Very different there. And finally, number six, it says draw horizontal line segment AB. So let's see, we draw line segment AB like so. Rotate segment AB counterclockwise around point B. So if that's my point, I'm going to rotate this counterclockwise 90 degrees and I end up with something about there. I'm just free drawing it for now, okay? I can label that new point, I don't know, uh, C. So here's A, here's B, here's C. It says rotate segment AB clockwise around point B. So I go over there and I drop that up here and I put this there and I might have point D by moving that there. And then describe a transformation on segment AB you could use to finish building a square. So we would translate A uh, to C, moving this to that, or we could say translate um, AB to CD, and that would just move this whole thing from there to there. That's kind of the idea. So, you know, getting a square, something like that. Hope that helps out with your homework. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.